what is up guys welcome back to the inside the shop podcast what up what up um, once again here we are yeah it is uh we're inside the shop with tom and joey and we are joined tonight by our very good friend nick comic culture what's up what's Thanks up nick? nick good to have you back nick yeah good to be here guys nick i i am i'm ex- i haven't seen you much in the shop this week so i'm, I'm excited no. you're back yeah. back in the shop um yep. been checking out the podcasts Yep. podcast plural plural because there's a lot of them you guys are on had one on here yesterday it seemed like it was on all day um yeah sort of like your um i think it's the pcp army or uh, yeah yeah a buddy of mine fable he's at he's at one collection down on youtube and on instagram we had an instagram show on saturdays that we moved over to youtube just recently and so now we do that around noon central time on his mm-hmm. channel so it's like hour and a half something like that yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a great we've, we've done like dozens of episodes now You've had a busy weekend. Yeah. On very the, busy on weekend. The tube. Very, very busy weekend. Yeah. That, this is probably my fourth show this weekend. So, mm. yeah. Yep. Well, thanks for joining us. And, <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Thanks to all of you out there who are listening or watching. And if you get a chance, hit that like and subscribe button. If Thank you guys you. happen to be in the Spring Hill area, be sure to stop by the shop and say hi to me or Joey or whoever yeah. is working the door or inside the shop. Um, yep, yep. Maybe even see Nick here. You know, he'll sign oh, some yeah. autographs. He's got some T-shirts for sale over here. That's right. Uh, we'd love for you guys to pick up some of those. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Um, guys, I don't know if you've heard the news. Uh-oh. Joey? Mm-hmm. I'm excited um, about this one. This is actually positive. Yeah. A lot of times when we get comic book news, we all go, huh. Okay. Yeah. Well, we've been burned so much. So much. Mm-hmm. But this one, I actually, so DC sent out the, um, I forget what it's called. It's the DC the previews. Connect? DC Connect. Yeah. They sent out the new DC Connect uh, soliciting for January. Yeah. And they are releasing the unpublished version of Uh, Batman 428. Yes. The death of Jason Todd. Okay. But this time he doesn't die. They're going to release the, you know how they did the the 900 call in. Right. Right. So we're getting the alternate version of, of Batman 428 where Jason Todd lives. So 35 years ago, you could call in and vote whether or not Jason Todd lives or he dies. And they voted for him to. <laughs> Jim uh, Starlin was on that, right? Jim Starlin. Yeah. Um, and I I think the rumor, the word on the street is that mm-hmm. somebody robo called that thing. Like, because mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. it just uh, barely killed kill him. him. Like it just was, it was like, yeah, it yeah, was yeah. minuscule. But like, I think somebody called the number just enough to just to make sure right. he died. And they wrote both copies at the same time, right? They, they both did. wrote. They, brought, they had, but they, they shelved all, the one, shelved obviously. It. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's the big, I'm actually, here's the thing. We're in this world of facsimiles and reprints and foil covers. I mean, it's like the 90s. Yeah. yeah. The only thing, and Joey just, you, you know what I'm talking about because you're the one, we're ordering these things. The only thing selling, man, are, it seems like in the DC and Marvel world yeah. are facsimiles. Yeah, or, or a foil facsimile, or just a foil in general. Yeah. And we are on facsimile foil overload, because it's like the 90s all over again. Unless yeah. it's just straight Batman or Spider-Man, that's pretty much what's selling. Yeah. And if you looked at the New York Comic Con as of late, all of a lot of the exclusives were just foil covers, too. I think a good like half of them were. Yeah, I actually ordered some, but I think a, yeah. Yeah, a good chunk of yeah. them were off. Like, they, had the, they actually had the... Um, the DC logos, like the, right. Superman, they had that foil. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of comic shops had that access to that one. Yeah. So there's that, there that is right there. Um, um, Matt's bringing it up. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Those, yeah. Are, dope. Yep, yep, those yep. are actually really cool. Yeah. I think you can still hunt them down out there. Um, but they were retailer exclusive. They got a reverse flash one or is that just made up? Because it actually looks pretty cool. It uh, look yeah, cool. it looks, yeah, it looks like a. It's like Wally West logo, not Barry Allen's. Yeah. Oh no! Something's got to be made. Are they, that's an OG Superman logo, like the original Superman shield. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, not my thing though. Yeah, but it's like you're not a fool guy. No, not really. I'm a story no. guy. So numbers Absolutely. for us are like we we are literally in the shop selling covers. Yeah, covers. That's really all it is. Right. Um, which leads me to really I want to talk about this week, Nick. You're you're a hundred percent, a hundred percent our our independent comic book guy yeah yeah I think and so. you know and for those of you who, who don't know nick's got a yeah. great comic he's got several shows that he does here in the shop one he refuses uh, or he showcases what's um new in the shop new in the shop for the week and yeah he yeah. does that what comes in on tuesdays right uh no wednesdays yeah Wednesday. wednesdays at 9 a.m i do new release and final order cut off correct and yeah. then um he also has a comic review show the nick at night yeah 
Naked Nights, Saturday nights, 7 yep. p.m. So, uh, but Nick's a, an adamant uh, independent comic guy. So. Yep, guilty as charged. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, guys, the con- I'm going to do a positive before we get into the negatives here. Yeah. All right. I will say within the content world, I'm really excited about G.I. Joe. Yep. Yeah, that'll be good. That'll be good. Because I do, I'm excited and put this on your shows. I think the Inner John universe, it's not too late to jump in. It's you can, not. You it's can not. still get yeah. second printings of Void Rival. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're definitely going to get second printings of Transformers. <laughs> and let's ju- FOC for GI Joe is tomorrow, tonight. Yeah. It'd be tonight when the show comes. Well, out, so. that's a continuation of the IDW, or was it IDW or whoever they were on before? It's a 301st yep. issue. 301st issue. So yep. I, it's a soft reboot reset. They're, no, they they switch publishers. So I get to, that, so but are they? Yeah. It's soft like, continuation. It's a soft continuation. Soft, soft continuation. <laughs> yeah. Now we're going to get Duke, and we're going to get Cobra Commander. I think in January or well, Q1 or Duke like is allegedly got a cameo mm. in Transformers Two. Spoiler. Oh. Spoiler. All right. All right. That'll so Larry cool. Hama, the writer, do we know him on other projects? Uh, Does it ring a bell? Head, no. Yeah, me either. I just know my name. He is Larry Hama. Is okay. This he, is separate. He is, he is Mister GI Joe. He's been GI <laughs> yeah. Joe for like most of my life. Though. Yeah, he okay. is. Larry Hama has been so in good hands. He's the one that yeah. basically created the story of Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow. Okay, and pretty much everything you know about GI Joe from the time you got excited about it till now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, Larry Hama. There are also images. This is also on FOC. Is uh, they're doing a release of. G.I. Joe one, but like a director's cut, like a like a mm, some okay. never before seen yeah. content. So this is That's separate cool. from three oh one. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Yeah. I would like I would like not only director's cut stuff, but like the sketch art. I want the black and white art. I think one of them is yeah, black yeah. and white. That would be so cool. So pull that up. Can you pull up League of you Comedy? The, you're a little younger than we are. Did you yeah. have G.I. Joe growing up much? Was I like had a... I had half destroyed G.I. Joe figures that my older brothers played mm-hmm. with. Oh, Same with Star best. Wars too. Because yeah. my, my brothers have a good like thirteen years on me, you know. Check, so check F O C for today. Because it seems like there was a, a good like bit of time between the 80s and when they were you know in comics again yeah yeah and, yeah. and for a new, new or for a younger you know group to be exposed to them yeah my, my childhood was like tmnt and things like that so yeah. i was a little bit a little bit too young for or you know i came out a little bit later well i'm i've been i'm enjoying i've liked void rivals i've enjoyed yeah transformers was like uh how do i say this what's the word for Transformers, did you read it? Yeah. What do you what do you what do you think? Um, I thought it was uh just a nice setup. It's one of those I get this with a lot of number ones. It's like okay, all right, yeah. So I'll I'll read the second one, see where this is going. Yeah. Well, it was new <laughs> that reader was the friendly. impression. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it was new reader friendly too because if you watch like Gen One, uh, Episode One, it's just it's a retelling of that ish ish so if you fast forward about five minutes into the episode ish. you get the rough estimate ish yes yeah, yeah yes except it's got like it's almost like an alternate there's, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. there's there's, uh, there's choices made that weren't made before there's one oh, major because they would have never ooh, they would have never sold they would have never sold there's one major character that's like missing that you know you're gonna see later oh yeah yeah oh so, yeah but yeah. It, yeah it followed it pretty closely but that, yeah. it was not pretty good yeah so yeah. good there good there yeah, definitely. That, so well, that, I, I don't even know how they're pulling these universes together. So that's what I'm really excited about. Yeah, I don't know how the Void Rivals, other than it's out, you know. So GI Joe and Void Rivals is a is is before Transformers One. So like Void Void Rivals One takes place before Transformers. Yeah, I, I got that. Yeah, because there's only one thing that connects those two books right now. So just the fact that. Um, we had a cameo in one book. And he was it showed up. <laughs> we can talk about it. It's one. been four weeks. So they're on issue four now. <laughs> Uh, it's been it's been a hot minute. People, if you haven't read Void Rivals number one, that's what I'm talking about. The Larry Hama cut is coming out right there. GI Joe, a real American hero number one. The Larry Hama cut. Oh, okay. Larry Hama, dumbass. So yeah, yeah. Full screen that bad boy, Brooke. If you're on Spotify, we're looking at the actual uh, new version of the first GI Joe number one. It's yeah. just it's a so again here we are, guys. We're back to facsimiles. We have to remember <laughs> that. Hey, did we have any fools this week? I don't remember us. There were any foils, at least. On um, there was. Week. Red Sonia was a foil because it was a oh, frizzen foil. It was true. a frizzen foil, it so was it was a, a double whammy, right? I was yeah. Thinking, oh wait, because I was looking at the stats. There weren't here. any DC or Marvel foils. Okay. Gotcha. I didn't pick up any. And there weren't any facsimiles this week. Which is a shock. 
Well, our number, our number one seller this week was actually a cover, and it was actually a second printing, and it was Silver Surfer Rebirth with Thanos. Oh, with Thanos. Cover. That was yeah. our number one seller? That was our number one selling comic this week. Really? The, off, the, off the shelf. Off the shelf. You don't, no, no. not Justice League versus King Kong versus. Those are all gone. It came in third. Well, you're. Behind uh, Spine Tingling. Now, now we're, not, we're not counting pulls, so. Oh, well, hold on a second. We had about 10 variants of that book. So are you adding all those up, or are you just. Yeah. I'm adding them all up. At the Silver Surfer number one beat that off the shelf. Beat it off I'm, the I don't shelf. I don't believe that. So, yeah, that, that I don't would believe be shocking. That. I'm shocked. Oh, oh we are, well, that had a full too. Yeah. So, ju- no, ju- Justice League had. Uh, um, Justice League versus King Kong versus Godzilla. Godzilla. Um, so, we had five. Shoot. Of, let me see. And. I don't believe that. Do you believe that? Yeah, no, not really, because we had, uh, there was like four different variants on the shelf for Godzilla. There was there were a hot, four or five. Yeah, and they were and they're all sold deep, out, and they're all gone. They're all gone. Huh? I mean, Lauren bought like every variant. Yeah, and Thanos. There was, I think there was only like there's only a handful deep on that one. Silver Surfer Rebirth. Yeah, and it was a reprint too, and they just put Thanos in the cover. Oh, Rebirth that, Legacy. Oh, it had that Thanos cover. That yeah, negative, that negative space. Oh, that, but then there was another version sense. of it, too. So, again, it's like it wasn't because Silver Surfer Rebirth is an awesome book. No, no, it, it just wasn't. had a cool cover on it. It has a cool cover on it. I it see did. where Joey's going with this. Well, no, 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 but we, 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 um, we sold nine of those, and let's see here. We have five of Justice League. Uh, again, we're not counting pools. Um, and then, so actually, yeah, it's... It's a tie on those two. How was how many those silver surfer? Yeah, it's was like ten of those things on the show. Yeah, a dozen? something like that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, because people were specking that we ordered a few few extra on that, and then we normally would. Hey, so, foil sells. So you, unfortunately, so we want to get some comments going on the on this show for once. So y'all chime in on this, but you know, Joey and I are really at a point where it's. We, get, we just want some stories. I mean, we started a yeah. comic book shop, and we're like, man, we're going to get to read some cool comics. Of course, part of that is you get busy, and you don't have... We get our... our You know, our backlog is yeah. is, is probably yeah. as deep as yours. Uh, it happens. Uh, yeah. But at the same time, it's like... That's what you do. Yeah. At the same time, it's like, man, we... we <laughs> Finding a good story is tough. It's tough these days. Yeah. Now, I'm gonna, here's my picks, and you guys can tell me yours, but yep. this is current. Um, World's Finest for me is still rocking it. Still? Still rocking We're it. We're like 17 issues in. That's there good. are 20 or, or issues to, in. Oh, wow. It's yeah, like, it's I'm, this, I'm behind. Yeah. It, I think issue 20 was this week. <laughs> wow. Um, so I'm still digging it. Okay. And this is coming from Mark Wade, who was, I don't know, Matt, remind me, is he was kind of mediocre in the 90s? No, Mark Wade was. <laughs> no, he was, no, was pretty, pretty, pretty shit. Okay. Nine, all right. Yeah. All right. He was living it up yeah, back then. As a matter of fact, I, I think Well, he, he did Kingdom Come. I'm not sure what's wrong with this mic, but it's new and staticky. It's probably, I have to return it. Mm. Um, Those are supposed to be the good ones. Yeah, King. He did Kingdom Come. Did Kingdom Come? Can I put a Can I put a qualifier on your past statement about we needing stories? Oh, here we go. Oh, here he comes, guys. Everybody, hold your and breath. I think Nick will agree. Uh oh, we need stories from our main streams, superhero people to drive the industry. There are stories coming out of Image, as I'm sure Nick and Image and some of the other independents. I'm sure Nick will attest to. There are good stories out there. There are plenty of good stories out there. But they're not good stories coming, in my opinion, not good stories coming out of Spider-Man, Superman, occasionally Batman, Wonder Woman. These, these are the, the, the lifeblood of the industry. Yep. And there's what people drive, people in and out the doors. Here, yeah. I'm going to give you, here's my tense, and I want to hear your opinion. And Matt, you're going to yeah. have to chime in. Here's why I think that is. And this goes back to that whole thing about um, the study that Lego did on how Boys play with toys and girls play with toys. All right. When boys play with toys, like they got a Batman figure, right? They're going to make the Batman figure do Batman things. Like yeah. he's going to fight crime. He's sure. going to fight the Joker. Yeah. All right. But if a girl takes Batman, she's going to make him have a tea party. This is, this yeah. was the study yeah. they did. This is what they learned because they were trying to figure out how to sell Legos. Right. Sure. Um, I think the same thing is true with, and I'm not picking on boys versus girls in the story writing. I think we're at a point where, people are taking Batman and trying to make him do things that aren't necessarily Batman things. Uh, yeah. And I want to say the same thing. And part of that is they're changing characters up a lot, a lot, you know, they're either changing their, 
um, ethnicities, their, uh, their genders, they're doing all kinds of, yeah. and they've been doing this for a while. Yeah. But they're changing up the characters so much that, number one, it's just kind of hard to keep up. Mm-hmm. Number two, it's just, it's not authentic to the character, right. especially to traditional readers. And um, so you're reading Spider-Man, and Spider-Man is making decisions that don't necessarily reflect who Peter Parker is. Right. Or at least traditionally who Peter Parker is. So we all have this disconnect. Like we all know who subconsciously we all kind of Superman is the big blue boy scout. Right. Mm-hmm. And he's going to do the truth, justice in the American way mentality. And he's always looking for the good in people. So when Superman is in a situation where he's not doing any of those things, yep. we don't buy into it subconsciously. I think also we I, don't, but it is a catch 22 because we, yeah. We, and this is, but this has been going on for so long. There was a point in the late eighties, in the eighties and nineties, where we're like, "Oh, we don't want this anymore. We want more dark, gritty comic books. We want image comics. We want adult stories." Yeah. And yeah. but honestly, though, if you read those stories, they're still actually they may be a little bit more mature, but they're actually still stories that wrap up within one issue, not dragged out for twelve. Tom King. Tom King. Um, you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> for those in the back for those in the back um, I don't endorse most things said but no <laughs> I do yeah nothing I, I say or Joey say should reflect it <laughs> Nick but we're gonna talk uh, anyway that's my 10 cents I yeah. think that the, we're looking at stories that are um, honestly man I just don't think people understand how to write the stories I think that's why Mark Wade's like crushing it right now. It's because he actually because he has a, decades under his belt. Well, of he just it? no. I think he, I think he was educated in a way that's different. Oh well, yeah, sure. Like he think he understands uh, the visual and narrative much better. Yeah. Storytelling know? structure, highs and lows. Also, and I think he can wrap up a comic book in one issue where most people can't. They yeah. want to. They gotta have. I gotta. I gotta have fourteen pages of <laughs> panels that yeah. don't have like may have one sentence in it the whole time. Tom right <laughs> dialogue that's that's top king but then you've got a lot of these like i don't know middle-aged writers over at dc that are doing some wacky wacky yeah th- and then there's this whole mentality of let's bring out the most obscure character we can find and try to make him important yeah yeah <laughs> I think that's just a low risk move. I don't think they're. I don't think it, it is. I think it's somebody. It's like it's I like guess. James Gunn. I don't. I disagree with that. I think it's people like James Gunn who are thinking, "Look, I'm going to go take Polka Dot Man. I'm going to make him cool." No, <laughs> right. no. I'm going to bring James Gunn. I'm doesn't gonna, have full reign of of what he does. There's somebody telling him, Jim Lee, telling him, "No, you can't do that. You can't. You I can't, don't believe that either. You can't mess too much with this character." So they take low risk characters and they make them whatever you know they take risks with them they don't take risks with with the bigger ones so there's an oversaturation of just batman related stuff anyway so if you want to make an arkham city book well that's been the argument focus on ten-eyed man you can because who the hell's using ten-eyed man right now listen i i do think that um yes there's been way too many batman stories yeah which why i've enjoyed i will say this i have enjoyed the justice society books up Mm -hmm. until the next one is about to come out i'm not gonna like it um i like the Justice Society, I liked, um, I like, um, what's the one that just came out? I like the Flash, the Jay Garrick one. I like that one. That was pretty good. Um, Did you read the Flash number one? I hadn't had was a chance. Was it Cy on that one? Cy yeah. yeah. I want to read that one and I want to, Joey said it was kind of fast. Um, and I want to yeah, see. there's a lot going on. And no. I want to, it's on my stack, it's in my backlog. <laughs> that one and uh, uh, Sandman, I want to read that one too. Yeah, Sandman's okay. It's okay? Yeah. I was hoping it was really good. If you're a big Sandman fan, but like don't Who's a big Sandman fan. I was gonna say, don't don't come out and say, Oh, I love Sandman. It's like nobody loves Sandman. It's been gone forever. Again, I don't think he needs his own title. Power Girl no, doesn't need her no, own title. No, but he but he was just interesting enough to make night terrors. I can tell fun. you right now, Power Girl, True. Fire and Ice, those things those stories are not selling the books. It's the covers. Well, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely covers. I I did read Fire and Ice. I don't think it's a terrible story. I th- I think I think that um some of those books are being written to a younger audience, which I can get behind that. Um, some yeah. of the some of these, it's like uh, World's Finest Teen Titans, written for a younger audience. Yeah, that doesn't make sense to me. Totally fine. Well, 
I mean, here's the thing. People that buy these back issues, this is what sells um, in our shop, number one, week after week after week, are these back issues. There's people of a certain age that don't buy anything new. They don't read anything new. They just buy these old books. <laughs> and then... You know, yeah. we're selling nostalgia. Yeah. And then you've exactly. got and then you've got people like around our age, maybe a little bit younger that are reading the books that are coming out now. And we're complaining about just about basically every single thing that's written and how it's being written and what they're putting in it. And then there's a, this reality of people that are younger than us that see all of that a totally different way. And, yeah. But the thing is, they're trying to go after them. Uh, these we've grown up with this. We followed this. We've 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 had this our whole life. Young people haven't, you know, this is a, there, this is a world that, you know, is, um, trying to reach a generation that's on their iPhones and, you know, reading this stuff on their iPads. And, um, so they're reading manga, they're not reading this stuff. And so I, they're just throwing Hail Marys left and right. I think but I Marvel honestly, DC I honestly trying to get people in to read this stuff. So that's why you get to I honestly, see all of this, you know? Yeah. But I honestly don't think these, these writers today know how to write. I mean, were we saying? Are we saying woke? Or are we not? Saying well, no. I mean, I, I think they know how to write. The problem is they're writing. They're, they're writing based on the culture that they live in right now. Yeah, so but that's it, so it's, it's the culture yeah. of their friends, not the culture of the yeah, masses. Yeah. All right. Is this? Yeah. I got a book up on the cover on, on the monitor. That's K-pop. Is this selling? Well, Spider Gwen books. It, it will because it's a bubblegum book cover. Um, okay. I didn't buy that, this one. Okay. I just so specifically didn't thing. want this sure. one from Eastside, <laughs> even though I like uh, lyricsly. Um, but I did put some of the other spot like the david nakiyama covers that are on um coming up for foc soon i did throw some of those on my pool but um uh, anything spider gwen though does tend to sell because that probably will sell to the right audience the question is will the right audience know that book exists no there was a spider gwen book that came out last year because there's a lot of tiktokers that dress like that of course yeah i, I read probably 15 books a week for, for three years four Good or five six you. years now Good and for you, man. there was <laughs> there was there is I'm glad you have that kind of time and he there, still has a backlog yes yeah. uh my backlog is mostly trades though to be to be uh, fair you're and trying some, to catch up on issues. your pre-comic i'm trying to pick i'm trying to catch up on stuff that i should have known like know? what oh god i don't know just any classmen oh no actually watching was like one of the first things i got oh. um when i started getting got into comics but like i want to get into the ultimate universe that doesn't matter the point i was trying to make was spider gwen there was one issue of Spider-Gwen that came out last year. It was a new number one. And I got halfway through it and I had to put the book down. Not because of any kind of like weird cultural things or woke stuff in it. It was just bad writing. Mm -hmm. So like it wasn't even something that I, it, it, it just bothered me. And really? I read that many books a week. It's like if I read a book that I have to put down halfway through, it's got to be really bad. You ever walked out of a movie? I have never walked out of a movie. No. Matt, have you ever walked out of a movie? One time. What movie was it? Jet Li's Black Mask. Black Mask. I don't think I've seen that. What did you watch it? You ever walk out of a movie? Yeah, The Spirit. With Spirit. That, with Alec Baldwin. Yeah, the um, bl the black and white. Wow. Oh. Was that like the Will Eisner I adaptation of, of The Spirit? I wonder. I walked out of two movies. Yeah, the movie. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was like two it was movies. I walked out of. What were they? Uh, Species Two and. Uh, oh, I didn't have the scenes like Forty Species. Days of Night. Mm -hmm. I walked out of 40 days a night. I okay. couldn't get into it. I okay. almost walked out of Batman and Robin. Really? Yeah. Was it the Bat credit card that did it for you? <laughs> I mean, it was a lot of stuff. <laughs> I was just like, you was know what? Yeah. It was the, nips. Yeah. It it was the was Bat nips. Like, what is the, yeah. What is this movie supposed to be? Yeah. It was Joel Schumacher. It was too much acid or something, man. That guy didn't. Yeah. You imagine if he was writing comics? <laughs> well, we have a lot of neon covers. Yeah. yeah that's right. That's true. But. You know, like we're like I was saying before. I mean, I think that the writers we we talked about world's finest being successfulish now and being still interesting and relevant because that breed of writer no, 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 just no, doesn't not exist. Forty anymore. days and forty nights. No, forty days. Forty days of night. It's, is it forty days of night? It's about vampires in Alaska. That's right. 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 Yeah, is it forty days of night? Yeah. Thirty days of night. Thirty days. Of thirty night. days. Of thirty night. days of no, night. That, okay, that was close. Thirty forty. Thirty days of night. There you go. Yeah, it's I'm actually an that, interesting really. concept. It yeah. was just, I just couldn't get into it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why I walked out. I was just like, this is not good. I'm not feeling it. 
Well, walking out of a movie is way different than just shutting a comic because it sucks after about 15 pages. Do you sling it across the room? When you I get... don't sling it across the room. I just put it in the stack, and then no, I think to myself, like... Not what, you, you come in here, and on the sly, I put it back on the shelf. And, and I have just... seen you do that. <laughs> I did that tonight. <laughs> <laughs> what book was it? I don't know. There was a stack of stuff. I have no idea. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, uh, Indigo Children, uh, Godzilla. Is, that, is Indigo Children... The the back half of that series really sucked. Just kind of dropped. It was, yeah, it was yeah. a great concept. Yeah. All yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. It just again, I think it's one of those things where they're doing too much in a panel, and you, it's hard to follow. You know, it's like all of a sudden they yeah. and it jumps too much. The time. Yeah. Like it does. It's not very fluid. Again, I think. You know, I personally think, and especially from us, just a sales standpoint, these things can be wrapped up in one issue, not not intentionally meant to. I don't know. I think it could be a different tactic because yeah. like now the the mentality is if I can drag a story out for 12 issues, people are going to come back and buy 12 issues. But the truth yeah. is it's like they're losing. There's so much stuff. They're losing track of it. Like, I mean, I, I enjoyed, I was enjoying Radiant Black. I was enjoying Oblivion Song. You know, I was enjoying a lot of these indie books. It's just yeah. either the writer took a break and the Not comic terrible. went um, I finished Nocturne. Uh, don't even get started on Nocturne. <laughs> but again, <laughs> Nocturne, none. It was another one of those. It was really awesome, but it was just like it kind of trails off at the end. It does. Trail it's off hard the end. to I do would, that. I would rather. It's hard to write twelve months up with when yeah. I, someone like Scott Snyder's probably writing a dozen books at one time. Yeah, but I mean, like, so, but the the need for that number, that twelve issue run. Who makes that number up? The publishers or the writer? It's not the writers. The publishers are private. There's. It, it can't be a coincidence that a lot uh, of. I mean, there's a contract, right? I would rather have the creator saying, I have a great story for you, I can tell you. I don't know how long it's going to be. It's going to be as many issues as it needs to be. That's mm. my contract for you. It's going to be at least five because I have a big story I want to tell, but I'm not going to give you 12 because are there I any, can't. Are there it's any really books out there that it's like, this is Cliff Aaron, can't wait to get this books, this book next week, Oh, next month? For I sure, mean, yeah. Is Saga still holding strong? Saga's taking a little bit of a dip and it comes out every Didn't quarter. Something's killing the children quarter. kind of yeah, dive down Something's killing the children. Definitely. They got. By the way, they've got a new spinoff coming out. I'm not buying it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, right. Probably already read it. I think something is killing the children is a good example of a book that was originally slated to only go six Six. issues. Yeah, and it became a smoking hit. And they're like, we need more issues. Yeah, Yeah, that's what I was writing. Got to struggle to figure out how he's going to extend his his six issue story into, you know, infinity. Well, that. especially since he's doing a lot of other work everywhere else, too. It's like, okay, at 17, we should have stopped that series because that uh-huh. was the next natural stop point for that book. And it just, it's now in like the 30s. It's ridiculous. Yeah, what Matt said, I've wondered that a lot of times if they had like a, a, a certain story and then they're like, no, we need more because this is selling, you know, we need, you know, we need to sell 100%. more, make more. And 100%. Like, oh, crap. I don't, I don't, I didn't write it past it. I don't think yeah. that Mandalorian was written past season one. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, for a season, lot of reasons. I mean, they didn't. A, it was a new platform. B, is like it's a new story, a whole new character. Mm-hmm. And like you said, it's 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 a lot of risk. And so, but it just, well, grow grew. I mean, that really sold it. I mean, the whole thing where everybody loved the Mandalorian. Yeah. But people could. But take, by season three, it's like he's doing that and book about when you know the creators are good, but they they can get stretched thin. Yeah, I mean, look at course. like look at Seth MacFarlane and Family Guy. All right, Family Guy was awesome. Yeah, in his early years, right? Yeah. I, I mean, I was up until like oh eight, which yeah. is when or oh nine he had the Cleveland Show, yeah. American Dad, and uh, I feel like there was one more. We stopped writing Family Guy completely. He went from being and he was also doing involved. all those movies at the time. Yeah, um, yeah Ted and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Million Ways to Die in the West. <laughs> he hasn't oh, written. God. He hasn't written Family Guy in a long time. But yeah. I mean. That was a show, Family Guy, that I literally made sure I had, I, I oh, watched. Yeah. I yeah. mean, Me and I, when the DVDs yeah. came out, I was buying them. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, had all the box sets. I was like, this yeah, is, I, had this, I wanted yeah. to, I wanted to keep watching. <laughs> I loved those shows. Yeah, they're good. But again, micro stories. All right. Yeah. That there's an overarching theme. They carry on through. You know, but it's like being able to write. It's like being able to tell a story in thirty pages, is a lost art to me. Yeah. I, I can't think of anything that does that. 
Well, the the thing, like a perfect example, we talked about James Gunn a while, while ago and obscure characters. Like the, you could take a, a page from the Mark Wade book here, twenty issues in World's Finest, about bringing characters in other worlds and other. You know, they, we're at Kingdom Come now. You know, that's come into you know this World's Finest story. Yep. Take, yeah, and just marrying. And he's all been that weaving that keep, in for for and keep going. A while. You know, it started with Doom. You know, Doom Patrol. Uh, in there, is that right? Doom Patrol, like in the in the very beginning, uh, where he brought them in. Um, yeah, 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 and so yeah, just bringing all these characters, all these universes in, and doing it really, really well, and keeping it fun. That's a big, big thing, keeping it fun. Well, but yeah, they, yeah, <laughs> people could learn some things about doing long runs like that. I'm gonna drop them. the I word. Uh oh, indies, indies, baby. Indies, that's where the good stories are. Baby. <laughs> all right, so let me. Let I me, mean, I'm trying to think what indie books I'm actually something that's not like GI Joe because I mean technically it's on Image, so we call that an indie, but it's not an. Well, indie. Nick and I both yeah. had the same pick of the week this we week. Did. What was it? We did. Uh, beneath the trees where nobody sees. Yep. What, was it a horror? Yep. It was. It, uh, do you know Richard Scary? Richard Scary. That's it. Yeah, it's exactly like his the artwork. He did, Richard Scary, the the, the, little, the cartoonist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The European okay. European cartoonist. I think I know what you're talking about. He did like lowly worm and things like that. Yeah. The little bears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He drew the landscapes with the with the buildings cut in half, and you can like see what people are doing. Okay. What do people do all day? Was a big famous book that he put out. Sure, sure, sure. That art style with like Dexter themes in it. Oh, that yeah. sounds like yep, Yaz Alley. I'm not really into <laughs> hard stuff. But, yeah. <laughs> but you're saying you want you? No, okay. I get yeah, st- yeah. no. Joey mm-hmm. said read the Cull, and I read that, and I thought that was an interesting thing. It, yeah, it gets only, worse. Really? <laughs> yeah. The second issue gets worse. <laughs> anyway, it does, yeah, it I does. did read the second issue. Yeah, the third. Yeah, third issue just came out this week. It did? Yeah, it did. It did. did we get it? No, uh, no, we did not. Mm. Oh. But there are a lot of like anthology, not anthology, but like one and done stories out there like swan songs or um ice cream man or something like that you know mm-hmm. what i mean like you have this overarching thing which but is why i think ice cream man is good because you were like all right what's it going to be the new story this week yeah Can right, you keep, right. it's like twilight zone man it's like well, yeah it's very so, true big shout out to twilight very zone. true Heck yeah. yeah you know what i'm saying like so instead of having the mentality of i've got to drag a story out for 12 months all right What's the next month going to be? What's the next month? That's going to, br- I would be more excited yeah. about that because yeah, it's like yeah. people love mystery boxes. Yeah. What's the mystery story of the week? Yeah. What's, yeah, it's a new episode <laughs> every single month. What's Batman and Robin going to do this week? You know, that was always what people ran to the, to the thing to see. To yeah. the spinner racks. Yeah. Yeah. W. Maxwell Prince is really, really talented. Who? <laughs> what did he say? I didn't hear what he said. Oh, okay. I didn't hear what he said. W. Maxwell Prince. Yeah. Well, that he's really talented. Yeah. Just yeah, he's cool. He's a good guy. He yeah. did Ha Ha too, right? He did do yeah. Ha Ha. Yep. Mm-hmm. Is that the same concept? And yep. uh, Swan uh, Songs. No, that one was more connected. It, oh, I think, it was more I think, of a, right? I can't. Well, crap. Now I got to go back. Yeah, it was. It was just clown stories. It was but clown they, stories. But they yeah. were. There was a thread. Whoa, 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 whoa! He did a whole book on clown stories. Yeah, the book is called Ha Ha. Man, he might be scaring some people to death out there. Oh well, yeah, probably. Was it all scary stories? Yeah, there, it was like ice all, cream. It kind of yeah. felt like ice cream man stuff. It wasn't scary. I did like those Joe Hill books. Depressing and. The Joe Hill dollhouse and the stuff doll like that. The dollhouse, yeah. the Daphne Byrne. Uh, We've been trying to sell those since we had the uh, store People, men are missing out on those the books, man. Those are don't, legit. Don't sleep yeah. on those. Yeah, yeah. Joe Hill's Halloween awesome. Halloween in the Hills next weekend, y'all. Mm-hmm. Come check it out. We're going to have some. <laughs> I would buy your, those books. Have you got your Halloween costume picked out yet, Tommy? Uh, I mean, only got one, bro. No. Oh, yeah, well. And it's elaborate. I might do the Where's it Waldo, is. though. Yeah. I don't know. You do tall for Waldo. dress up what <laughs> you're too tall for words well though he's up there <laughs> <laughs> too tall for what everything you, you gotta hide what you gotta you hide got? in the store if what about you that. nikki i don't have anything picked out yet mm. actually this is a closing conversation um i'm probably gonna be the spring hill dr strange again so I get to work well it's with. a good one man i guess yeah. i'm mean, having to put some money into that thing but hell yeah yeah it looks great um you can borrow my uh necklace thing Unless you have that one I've that opens one. that opens up. Mine doesn't open, but it's pretty cool. Yeah, I know yours is pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Uh it's a I have Agamotto. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um Yeah, so I might bust it. Are you gonna be Popeye again? Nope. This year we're gonna be Johnny and Baby from really? Pretty Dancing. Mm-hmm. Oh wow. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Do you does your wife dress up? She oh she totally would. Yeah. I don't know what she's gonna do. My wife's gonna be a ghost. <laughs> It's just a really great costume. Sad. I mean, yeah. I, yeah, it's awesome, right? Yeah. It's really yeah. great. No, she bought like a Grinch thing this year because we do a, a parade and she's going to be Grinch. So, uh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. I don't know what to do. Corey and them did Where the Wild Things Are. Oh, that's cool. 
Mm-hmm. Who's it? What? Who's he going as? Um, I mean, that's a big costume. Um, I can't remember which the two. Uh, Sounds like a hot costume. They did it for this RV and, thing and they went bulky. to. Bulky, bulky. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Ryman is the the main kid. Yeah, mm. Max. Figured. Max. Is that his name? I think so. I don't know. Yeah, and then they, they're the two of the monsters. Right? Yeah, uh, main monster. Who knows? Um, it's creative though. Yep. Love the Frizzells always have a good. Halloween is my Christmas man. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's one more week, and Tommy's the Christmas guy. I'm all about the Christmas man. <laughs> Um. Yeah. So how's these? Uh, I kind of want to circle back though, because I want to get a little more into this content. Because I'm a little aggravated by it. Well, you know, what aggravates you the most about the content? Because, Honestly, yeah. The fact that if a parent walked in here and wanted their kid to jump into comics, doesn't happen. Yeah. Where do you? It's point very it? difficult to do. It like is. you know, it's like. If anything, and I would say this about a lot of our customers who are nostalgia buyers, they would want to see that too. But to find kids to come in here and do anything besides buy Pokemon cards is, it's hard. It's, and they won't even buy action figures, you know, because mm. they may buy Grogu or the Mandalorian or, oh, here's Venom, you know, or yeah. definitely Spider-Man. Spider-Man seems like it well, always sells. The but, stories in the shows sell action figures. So there you but go. the shows suck too. Yeah, that's what I mean. I mean, Marvel's taking a bath. I mean, Matt and I were talking. Brad, bring this stuff up, man. Let's talk about it. Let's get in the weeds on this, Matt, because this is me and you. This is our wheels. Disney is just abandoned. Let's bring this up here, guys. Look. They've abandoned three major shows. In a, <laughs> amid, check this headline out. Amid historic content purge. All right? This platform is barely, it's not even five years old yet. All right? And they are purging content. And why? Why is that? Because nobody's watching it. They basically derailed Marvel and Star Wars. Two of the biggest franchises ever, probably next to Pokemon and Super Mario Brothers. Yeah. Yeah, I heard Ahsoka had like a 40% viewer drop from episode it one was, to episode eight or whatever the last episode was. It's like this. You spend the whole season one waiting for like to find Ezra. That's all you're waiting on. Mm-hmm. You know, Thrawn comes on there and he just is like, he's not as... I mean, I like the voice actor, but he's just not that impressive as of a, of a... He didn't have the presence that you would expect. Right. And the story just wasn't going anywhere. It was like, why why, why all of a sudden has Sabine got force powers? Why all of a, Where are they going with this? What the heck is Hera doing? Like, she's like, oh, she's over here misdirecting with, you know, Princess Leia and uh, Mon Mothma. But none of this makes any sense. Like, none of this is, like, coming together. Mm. And I don't know. Again, I think it's one of those things where they're writing for a second season and then of course one of the main villains passes away right in the, after production's over yeah. oh that was heartbreaking too yes it was yeah. are we are we going to have an ahsoka episode part two should yeah. we i don't know should we give them the the satisfaction of know. us talking about an ahsoka hey <laughs> it I actually would give me a reason d- to watch it i kind of dug ahsoka <laughs> in a way now here's here's Did my you or- watch rebels though or clone wars i have a very interesting word of operations here oh, i here watched ahsoka first of course you did I didn't watch Rebels. You probably watched the sequels first and then Star Wars and then the prequels. No, okay, I, wasn't, I, was, I was born way before that. <laughs> I watched Ahsoka first. Uh-huh. I didn't know what the hell was happening. I didn't know who Ezra was. I didn't know who any of these characters were. I know Ahsoka, right? Right. Then I watched Rebels. You probably knew who Mon Mothma was. Uh, well, yeah, because of... Did you watch uh, Andor? No. Okay. Nope. You're hurting it's, Matt's feelings, just so I, you know. It's fine. He, he's fine. I watched Ahsoka, then I watched Rebels all the way through in like two weeks. Every episode. I didn't watch the, the watch guide or anything like that. Now I'm rewatching. Wait, you watched every episode of Rebels? In like two weeks. Man. Yeah. I knocked you. it out. Then my wife is like, I, I told her, I go, you need to watch Ahsoka just because you need to know where the Star Wars universe is going for the next five years. Because we're going to have a Mandalorian tie-in. We have a new show coming out soon with some like kids in it. I forget what the name of that live action is. I think it's live action as well. Then mm-hmm. we have a new. It's the acolyte, isn't it? That's it, like that's like High Republic be. stuff, though. Yeah, but or pre. I think it's like Sith War stuff. I'm not enti- entirely sure, but we have a lot of Thrawn stuff coming still. And I'm like, if you want to learn what's going on in the Star Wars universe, you have to watch it. And you got a Ray, so you... a Ray, some kind of Ray sequel coming out. Uh, 
anyway. So how much richer was your uh, Ahsoka I'm on episode, now that you have? Yeah. Here you go. Don't bring that back up. I man. think I'm on. Ep- I'm, I think I'm on episode three or four with my wife right now. Yeah. And of what? I, uh, Ahsoka second viewing after watching Rebels. Is it better? I think or it's worse. better. I really? think it's better. Yeah. After because, watching Rebels, well, he's yeah, not because, going in blind. Yeah, because now I'm like, oh, there's Sabine and like Hera talking, and like I didn't have any context prior to that, prior to the first watching, and now I'm like, wow, they have so much history together. I didn't know any of that crap. So here's my I'm looking thing. at Sabine's room, and I'm like, this doesn't mean anything to me. All of those Marvel series, they 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 come, they start out so strong, they just end on a whimper. I I'm honestly cannot get into Loki. I I watched the fr- I struggled through the first episode. I fell asleep in the second episode. I haven't even watched it yet. <sighs> We're three episodes in. I think, right? Three's out now? Mm-hmm. Don't know. Tuesday. Th- episode, episode three comes out mm-hmm. Tuesday. Okay. But it's like, it's a... It's not great. Yeah. I didn't watch Secret Invasion. I got four episodes, three episodes in and I dropped it. I just heard I it was bad. I couldn't do it. I'm not, they're going to take a bath well, on the Marvels. What about Daredevil? They scrapped the five episodes they actually did. Oh that gosh. is... Matt, there's something else about Daredevil. Like, it's not like they're completely getting rid of Daredevil. They're just restructuring it or something yeah they had four or five episodes done yeah they fired everybody and they fired everybody and they said this the script and the, the product is not good and we're gonna we're, we're scrapping so so this is the conversation i think i really wanted to have tonight is disney cleaning house matt nick joey is is disney in the process of getting rid of all these woke writers these um concepts that just are not pushing the needle until kathleen kennedy is gone i'm my answer is no because then they would have taken it as far as they need to take it to really make a difference yeah 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 i, yeah. I wonder even, i wonder culprit. then uh, even though even after that yeah because dave filoni not the he, he has said that he is kathleen's boy <laughs> you know, he's, yeah he's, he's <laughs> He said that. Well, I mean, they would. So. so they wouldn't be doing. They wouldn't be doing what they're doing right now if the if the result of all of their efforts of the last three or four years were positive. If they had great viewerships, they have subscribers going through the roof, and they had great reviews of all their shows, they wouldn't need to change anything. But they haven't had that, so they got to make drastic changes. So, and so what do you do? You I think, cancel projects. I think that are Disney the Plus is the prime example. Of what's wrong with this comic book industry? All right, people for since the 1930s have loved Disney for a certain reason. All right, there's a reason yeah. people go to Disney World. There's a reason people went and watched all the movies growing up. All right, there was a lot of things tied to that, you know. And then this isn't something that just happened through COVID. All right, yeah. I mean, go back 15, 20 years. You know, you had Disney XD. You know, there was um, the Disney Channel. You know, yeah. And there was a lot of original content on that. It was just corny. It was in a corny phase and the writing gradually got a little bit more this way, a little bit more this way, a little bit yeah, more kooky. Sure. But at least back then, there were still some people in charge that were kind of going, no, 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 we can't do that. Let's not do that. We can't, we can't go full. <laughs> people in, you know. You never go full. <laughs> you, 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 you never go full. Uh, but people in, you know, Mayfield, Kentucky, don't necessarily vibe what they vibe with in Hollywood. Now they may look sure. at Hollywood and go, "Oh man, that's cool. I like to go to Hollywood," but they don't really think like that, you know. Yeah. And so, not at all. Somewhere, someone got discon. There's this disconnect between what the majority of people who watch this stuff actually think, feel, and believe, all right, or are relate to, and what they're actually making decisions on consciously to put out there to the masses. Now I don't know if it's just a distraction or if it's just like a Hey man, let's, let's just give it a shot and see what happens because I don't have any other ideas, you know, or what the conversation yeah. is. It just seems like people have legitimately lost their minds. Yeah. Well, yeah, they could have, or it could just be a natural evolution of just that whole uh, culture to begin with. I mean, if you're going into storytelling, writing, artistry, things like that, you're going to have a certain education. You're well, going to be prone I, to certain things. There's probably some and truth. Gonna... Well, there's probably some truth in the sense that it's. Um, you know what? Really, what viewer wise? What are people really trying to drip? What are they sort of driven to today? I mean, what are yep. what are kids re- watching? They're watching YouTube. They're watching social media. Yep. You know, they're playing video games. You know, Roblox. Although I would mm-hmm. say some video games actually have some pretty legit stories. And manga know? and watching Crunchyroll. 
that's what that's crunchy what roll do. yeah 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 i mean it's 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 manga and anime yeah but I, yeah, I my mean, daughter's all about some manga right now yeah but i, I think, got a stack of manga but they actually books. probably have good storytelling in that good stories or is so it just told. wacky wacky fighting or what i think it's everything yeah. but do you think there's something to the manga thing uh nick uh, that because you're you're familiar with it a lot more than we are like um like these books have uh, the comic books, they have different writers mm-hmm. on the same characters. You know, you have these universes, you have these events, somebody dies, somebody comes back to life. There's this circular thing that, that happens in, in superhero comic book world. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's done it for years and years and years. Mm-hmm. Um, like in anime and manga, there's a guy that, that, that writes these stories. And yeah. some of these are 38, 39 volumes <laughs> in same writer. Right. You know, same story or, or you know, yeah. um, I don't know if there's different if there's different arcs or, or things like that that's going on there. But do you think that plays in, into into it's how, probably a cultural thing? I, and I, I think well, it's it a is whole a style thing, difference, sure. too. It's a completely different. But it's storytelling and, yo- mm-hmm. and it's reaching young people because so. it's more action. It's more action packed. It's more it, it's it's a quicker read. First off, you can you can finish a whole volume like one of these volumes on the wall and just like. 20 minutes you know if you really kind of get down to it obviously because the dimensions are smaller mm-hmm. but, the, but the stories are meant to be more fast paced the artistry behind them, the cartooning behind them is meant to be fast paced as well so you don't have all these pages of all this inner monologue and dialogue and oh woe is me and I'm so depressed and things like that you don't have those kinds of stories they exist but for the most part a lot of these books are the, the pace of them is so quick and I think that mm. that appeals to have you read, a read younger any? audience yeah I've dived into a few yeah mm-hmm. So I'm just wondering if there's a page that, you know, they, they can take with storytelling and how they go about doing that to, to put it in the comic book world because they yeah. have to be, you know, trying to copy Well, that. it's, I mean, look they at They try to copy social, everything else. Yeah, look at social media. I mean, like, reels, shorts, things like that are, do, are, are killing it right now. I mean, long-form podcasts and long-form uh, videos and things like that, they're not being consumed by younger people. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to be all Andy Rooney and everything, but like, that's the facts, right? I mean, like, people would rather flip through and watch a thirty-second video. I don't know that there's like, thing. honestly, man, I don't so really you think need pacing. I think there's a, I think there's this is not like America's doing this, Japan's doing this, you know, yeah. this writer's doing this, this writer's doing that, Hollywood's doing. I like to say these things. I mean, you could probably go down a rabbit hole of like, it's just people are educated differently. Yeah. I mean, edu- I mean, for twenty something years. You know, people have been educated to take tests, tests that don't really matter in the grand scheme of anything other than it. Right. Oh, we're a top test school, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and that does affect people because um, if you don't have any context for certain stories, you know, then yeah. none of it's going to make sense. I mean, I remember most people don't know this, but I was going to be a teacher. <laughs> Did you know that? I did not, but I have it, a, it makes sense. I have a bachelor's degree in English literature. That's really what I put on my oh, resume. Well, well, of course, of course and I knew that. Of secondary course. education, so I was going to be a high school English teacher. Um, and I landed on English because that was the only classes I could sit through because the professors I had actually made the yeah. content interesting. Sure. All right. Yeah. Um, now, I didn't get into all of it, but there was a lot of stuff I found very valuable. Um, until you sat through a whole class of 18th century satire and tried to understand why this is funny right all right you haven't lived <laughs> I'll, right. I'll, I'll, I'll take your word all for right that. um and the truth is it's not funny unless you know history mm. and like i didn't know what was going on in 18th century england right, you know right not at 19 i didn't i was like what right. is this I, i'm never gonna understand this yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and the professor does a good job of trying to get you to understand i remember this is you know this is me you know when i was in school and i feel like i'm I mean, I've got three degrees. I kind of feel like I'm a little educated. I'm, I'm not the smartest person on the planet for sure, but um, uh, but I have a pretty strong, you know, ability to recognize certain themes and stories. And sure, but can you imagine trying to explain something like that to people? That, this is why people can't understand Shakespeare. <laughs> people always go, "Hey, I, I would understand Shakespeare better if it was written in modern English." And right, I kind of right. go. Well, <laughs> it is. Yeah, but those are the same arguments you have to but have it's, those people but again, when they're it's, like, why do I need to learn this math? It's like, this isn't the conversation we should be having right now. <laughs> it's not about the formula. It's about the concept of learning. And it's about the fact I, that the, if I translated this for you into English, you're going to miss the point. 
because there was a certain attitude and language that they had to use back then to, to, to convey certain things. Correct. That's, and if I translate it, you're going to ruin it's that like experience. It, and you don't know that yet, but give it 10 years. And a lot of it is, is in the tone and pace that it's written in, but a lot of part of it, part of it yeah. is it's like they're slang words that are used in phrases that no longer exist. And it's sure. just kind of hard to understand. I mean, this That's is language. like four or 500 years ago you're talking sure. about, right? Sure. So it just, sure. it doesn't exist. Um, I do think there's some con- some um, <coughs> disconnects, you know, that are going on that we're now really starting to see in, in yeah. the writing of content. Matt, do you disagree? Matt's a content guy. No, and, and it's, it's interesting. I, I, we can actually have this conversation in a more modern environment. Oh, I like it that. Means modern the same, environment. In, in the same thing. Um, <clears throat> show Dr. Strangelove to a 16-year-old <laughs> high school student right now. I may... And, crawl in a hole and look for a safe space, bro. Come on. <laughs> and I don't think they would find any of the jokes funny because no. they don't have the context of the Cold War. Of the era. Of the era to really, you know, buttress the humor of Dr. Strange. I think Dr. Strange Love is one of the great comedies in the history of film. Hmm. But if you don't understand, you know, the, the flavor of the 60s Cold War Red Scare environment all those jokes are going to fall flat you're not going to get it yeah yeah see my point that's part of i think that's a big part of it i mean i think there's a educational divide you know i mean you you got there's an educational got a kid in school yeah there there is a divide but it's like you only notice the divide if you are looking back at it and credit and critiquing the 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 generation before you i think i think well, if you, i on. think in that generation think, they're looking but, around saying there's but, no problem but here. hold on a second though we're in an age where we have access to more information than the history of humanity all right that doesn't mean anything hold, I, I, this is my point yeah all right what are you looking at exactly when i yeah. was a kid i looked at the encyclopedia a lot right all right right so i actually understood a lot of things because yeah 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 there was an encyclopedia in our house it took we a had, whole shelf we had three channels <laughs> Because we lived out in Cunningham, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, K- Kentucky, and uh, so there wasn't like access to a lot of information. Like, yeah, right, you know, I can, right. I could got the whole world right here in my hand, right? You know, yeah, yeah. it's it's crazy yeah. to think about that. But if I can't find something to watch on TV, I'm going to pull up reels or stories and just start yeah. thumbing through. Look, I was laughing at something so hard last night. My mom thought I was having a stroke. <laughs> She goes, Tommy, are you okay? I was like, I'm cool. Yeah, this cat <laughs> fell down the stairs, but it's fine. No, nah, it was literally some dude uh, yeah, ran yeah. a motorcycle up into a bridge or something. <laughs> I just don't know why. I wasn't yeah, like yeah. choking, laughing. But my point is. Yeah. Um, before you learned how rain worked. And now I actually had books about that, though. I know. Like That's what condensation, point. precipitation. I mean, there was all kinds of. Slow down. The world book. Slow down for the I got a question for you. Oh, yeah. For who? All of us? For or all me? of you. Okay. Yeah, for the panel. For, for the panel. For the panel. Um, With. with respect to TikTok and this really short format consumption of mm-hmm. media. Yep. Is it because it's easy? You know, back in our day, we didn't, you know, what's we, Brooke, what's Brooke doing right now? <laughs> right. Sleeping. <laughs> um, <laughs> she really, like Brooke. <laughs> you know, we had to go out and find, we could go to the library or the bookstore to, and look for, we had to put in the effort to go find, something to to tease our brains with to entertain ourselves with you know you maybe you had a vcr at home you could watch a movie at home maybe there was something on television maybe you know so you we had to put in the effort nowadays mm-hmm. everything it, it's just right there tip of the button all you have to do is open up your mouth and intake it you know yeah is, but is that hurting these old medias comics trades film as a whole is it is is it being hurt because of that i don't know if the if that to answer this is going to be my opinion and i'm obviously going to talk about this first but uh, (laughs) um i don't know if it's much hurting that's not the word i would use it's we look at this meat like this media that comes across my phone i don't have any control over what it is who's doing it and for the most part it's just as ran if either random stuff that somebody either caught created or is fake now. I mean, there's a lot of AI stuff out there. It's like, I go, this isn't even real, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I think the motive behind what we're seeing is what's drastically different. Like stories were traditionally stories were told for a purpose. 
And that purpose was to convey a moral truth about humanity so that you could understand either your place in this world or right and wrong or, you know, if you were feeling a certain way or if you had these thoughts, like, you know, you could traditionally find a story that was sort of, you could relate to. Yeah. You know? And I think even though those stories do still exist, Mm -hmm. I don't know that when it comes to mass media, you know, that's 100% gotten lost. You know, yeah. and you try to bring up cert, such concepts. I mean, I, I mean, I would be, I never really even thought about this. And Joey, this is something you and I kind of talk about a lot. But it's like, how much of the content that we watched growing up really affected the way we feel, think, and look at the world? I mean, we got the PSA announcements at the end of G.I. Joe. Mm-hmm. You know, don't yeah. talk to strangers. Don't mess with down power lines. You know, get the house is on fire. Get the hell out, you know. Spay new to your pets. <laughs> yeah. Stop, drop, and roll. <laughs> you know, if, don't cross the frozen ice. <laughs> I and mean, there was like a lot yeah, of. Yeah, the more you know, right? Or, or, and uh, knowledge is power. One to no, grow no, 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 no. We'll watch the one. That's not how it's it. It was uh, knowing is half the battle. Knowing is half. What is, what is the knowledge is power thing? Knowledge is power? Yeah. No, I think that was uh, He-Man. Okay. He did PSA announcement too. There you go. Mm-hmm. But his was a little yeah. more. His was always more touchy feely. It was more like <laughs> He Man was uh, woke before woke was woke. <laughs> <laughs> I could see that. It was in today's the, episode. Orko learned nice not to, to, to pick on <laughs> Man at Arms because Man at Arms was going to break his arms. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It was uh, my point is you can see what I'm saying. Like yeah. I think there's we just don't have there's no rationale behind it. There's no reason to have these conversations. Yeah, yeah. These but, stories. But I also think it's like, it, it, it's, again, I keep going back to the fact that the generation that's growing up right now, they have a different expectation for story. Yes. And they have a different expectation for how it's developed, how it's right. how It's, it's all entertainment based. How it's consumed. It's and so what inter- they, don't, they don't see these kinds of things as something is dying. To them, it's just like, oh, it doesn't exist. It's over here because there's this other thing that exists in that void that you guys are looking back at that we don't even have your perspective, so we don't even care. So I, I think there's a lot of that going on. Well, let me ask you this question. It's, it's the same thing like horse and buggies. It's like when cars came out, it was only a matter of a couple of years before those things were gone. Mm-hmm. So it's like when comics are here, when something else comes in, when newer forms of media comes in, shorter form, uh, flashier stuff, catchier stuff, it's going to wipe out the boring stuff. And the generation that used that is going to fade away. So things are going to evolve, and it's not dying to them. It's just an evolution to them. Do you still think content is good? <laughs> <laughs> I think it depends on where you're getting it from. Yes. Ah, you're, that's, that's my point. Though. <clears throat> I think that's our point. Yeah. Well, you have to be selective of where you're when, trying to look for content. If you're looking for mm-hmm. content. Are you selective with what your daughter watches and reads? I let her kind of do whatever she wants to do, but I watch what she pays attention to. And I, I kind of steer her in the right directions. Yes. Okay. For sure. You I'm just to. curious. I was like. Well, you can't let your kid go free reign because they're going to yeah, find sure. all sorts of random crap. What, what kind mean, of weird, messed up stuff did we all see? Dude, when I we were found kids? porn when I was in the second grade. Well, in like the anarchist handbook and stuff like that. Like I was, I was, <laughs> I, uh, I was a teenager. <laughs> I was a young teenager. How old like, were we watching out. Faces of Death? Uh, probably 13, 14, 15, something like that. No, I was younger than that, man. It had to be. Well, it, it was out before that, but when it was on my radar, it, when it was at the Mayfield Cinema video, yeah, place, video that's rentals, when I was yeah, like, oh, I for know. sure. Yeah. yeah. Do you watch Faces of Death? I'm, I don't know. You have that. no idea what we're talking about. I have no clue. Oh my no. gosh, these were awesome videos. Pull this up, man. <laughs> Snuff films. Don't pull them up like a video. Pull up like the covers of the VHS. These were, most of this was fake. But some, oh, it was all like very like, little. Like Red Room real. kind of stuff? Very yeah. little of yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but yeah, it was yeah. like, but, these, we, but the problem is, when I grew up, we had real footage but of that. Keep stuff. in mind, though, keep in mind. Right, yeah. At the time, yeah. you know, like nobody had ever seen it. Gore.com. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. But so, it was like, I remember there was one of these that was like some dude got blown up in a nuclear explosion. There was yeah. like like five or six. How many faces of death? Yeah, there was a few. Yeah, of them. it's it's vaguely familiar, but anyway. No, yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying, like, I can honestly say my parents rarely, with the exception of music, for some reason, music was always taboo. But like, they didn't really keep us from watching. They wouldn't let me watch the Garbage Pail Kids movie. I remember that. I watched that when I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and actually we, me and Toby, cool snuck in, Toby and I snuck and watched it at my, my uncle's house and like he ratted us out. Oh gosh. <laughs> and she's, my mom was so mad at us because we watched that movie. No. 
No, I was watching. I was I was watching R-rated movies and stuff like that when I was a little kid. We were too. I remember watching like ten like, years old. I was yeah, watching horror crazy movies. Shit. And... I couldn't imagine my daughter watching some of the stuff I watched when I was ten years. I old. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, isn't it again the whole conversation is more weird about it's like the how do you curate content for today's generation but at the same time it's like well we probably were exposed to more adult shockier, concepts shocking things yeah as kids than kids are today yeah i think i think we were more exposed with shocking physical content they mean physical gore oh, like, like what we just talked people about. up yeah but i think today they're being they're being exposed to more uh like Ideas. Mental thing and ideas. ideas and ideology, ideology. Yeah, I think that's which the is thing. more dangerous. Uh, we'll see. As a parent, we'll see. Well, I have yeah, no I idea. Mean, I mean, if my kids going out there stabbing frogs, that's a problem too. <laughs> yeah, but that's if, that's but something if, wrong with your kid, man. You got to. <laughs> well, no, because if they saw, if they saw whatever the heck we just pulled up a minute ago, and they were like, "Hey, I want to do that." That's yeah, but like up. you would hope that if your kid saw a video, of somebody oh yeah, something, killing frogs. Right, go, I don't right. want to do well, that. Well, depends that's, how young they are, or being upset about it. Yeah, yeah I don't yeah. know. I'm depends just how young I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Abigail, yeah. she, my, she likes to watch just the dumbest stuff. Yeah, like, yeah. It, it's just like the you know the really super fat guy just humiliating himself, eating you know as much McDonald's as he possibly can, and then of course there's all the bathroom bathroom humor that you get of with course. eleven and twelve year olds. But yeah, um, yeah. I was, jokes. Yeah, but I was watching like um, d- d- me, mom and dad and and I watched In Country this morning. And oh wow! A, a movie uh, made in our hometown, and it was like pretty Based on a agreed book. upon. Yeah, it was just an okay movie. But I, when I was watching, I, and and it, and it ended, it, it, it the storytelling and the way you know that the movie and the story was structured was you know just like all of the movies were back in the 80s and the 90s and it was just like this is so much better than like you know the stuff that we go to the movies and see now you know the, the and and it's just like and i always wonder if it's just that's my perspective because you're talking about evolution and, and and things like that they told stories a certain way the steven spielbergs and the um hitchcock, you know, hitchcock all, all those them. yeah yeah and, and those were stories that were told in a way and uh and they were structured in a way that like that that's what i love and they don't do that anymore like no. that's why like flash and wonder woman and all these movies seem like a huge mess like <laughs> they can't have like yeah. you know they have six characters in it and they can't uh they can't get the story told in a cohesive way and uh in my opinion but like back then you know in, in this story uh, in country they had five or six characters and it all worked together and it was perfect it had and crescendoed at the end and it was you know okay yeah and we felt have you good. ever read the book uh-uh yeah okay do you think that the the, what you just said just brought up a point for me do you think that the subject of the stories being told now they're meant for the younger audience of now who would relate to the stories or maybe be more accepting of those but the target audience and the people going to the movies are guys like y'all i I think i do and so now you're going back i don't know with that because you'd like the flash but the flash wasn't written for you the flash was written for i don't think people that's part of it. Not I don't everything. think people, number one, really consider who the audience is on a lot of things. Oh, that's a problem because I think that though it's almost like they're throwing a. I think they're just like this would be a cool idea. Okay, let so, me get in here. So maybe, oh, oh, thank God! Let me get in here. <laughs> here comes. Here so comes. I'm going to bring this back to Disney. Bring it back, baby. So and to tie into what you guys are talking about with the uh, new Snow White, the Disney. Uh huh. The lead actress who's playing Snow White has specifically said in interviews. That this is a new Snow White. This is not your 1930s Snow White. Snow White. Now we're taught. We're thinking about. You know, those themes are gone. We're talking about what she does to, you know, with her. You know, power and authority, and, and as a leader, you know, these are the things that we're that they're putting into these legacy characters like Snow White, these legacy stories have gone away from the storytelling that had been a standard since the, what, 1939 when Snow White came out, something like that, you know, and, uh, and, and to kind of to what, what Nick was talking about, is there an audience for this new modern take on this character or is the audience still us who remember 1939 Snow White 
and are expecting 1939 Snow White, but not getting it, and that and 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 henceforth it's off the rails, because the audience that they're trying to put it towards is a TikTok audience who ain't got two hours to spend watching Snow White. <laughs> yeah, you I, know, I, I I think they think there's an audience, and I don't think it's as big as they expect. Um, I don't think it's as big as they as they're hoping it would be. So if they put that movie again, out, I think it, it goes back to that Lego out. conversation. I think yeah. they say, "Here's the character. We're going to try to make this character do something that's a little bit not what we're used to." And yeah, just see how it works. Just to see how. Well, I no, I don't know if it's just so much like let's see how it works. It's like if I was doing this, this is how I would do it. Mm. Mentality. And again, I don't think the audience they think exists out there is as big as they think it is. Right. Um could be wrong about that but you gotta understand we're conditioned this may be changing this is something i'd really like to delve into but like not tonight i think we're, we're conditioned for stories to be a certain way yeah we're conditioned for content to be a certain way whether that's music whether that's we are our age is what you're talking about well you know even our parents and our parents parents i mean for i mean thousands of years storytelling has been a very specific thing yeah um the mediums have changed. The technologies have evolved. Mm-hmm. The new characters have been introduced. But like, you know, Snow White and the story of Snow White, um, I mean, it's not like Walt Disney created that himself. That was <laughs> they, borrowed. They, they pulled from a lot of most previous of, stories. Most of those are. Of Sleeping course. Beauty, yeah, you know, yeah. um, Cinderella. Yeah, Pinocchio. I mean, come on. And they're also yeah. altered versions of the original stories. Mm-hmm. However, they applied techniques that made sense for the audiences at the time. Yeah. I don't think that that's still going on. Some, there's a disconnect somewhere. They're neither not considering audiences or they just don't care. Or they're or, just trying to yeah. accommodate a very specific demographic that, like I said, there just isn't as many of them out there as they think. Mm-hmm. No matter what the story, no matter what they're pushing this towards. Or no. they're not as talented as they need to be. They don't. They don't pay homage to the classic storytelling that we've maybe have come to know. Well, I think right? people. So if you look at a Disney story back, if you look at a Disney story from forty years ago versus one now, is there enough respect to the legacy of storytelling and and the and the values that they pulled forward from classic runs and things like that to to build something new but still resonated because it's like a human truth that they're pulling forward versus today where it's a little bit more superficial. It is. Okay. I think that's where you're getting into it. It is superficial. Most everything we see today is surf is on the surface because for younger generations, they do not know how to process going deep (laughs) layers like that. All right. Because we got to go to the next thing, baby. We can't just, it's not so much that it's not so much that they're anxiety ridden. (laughs) Oh, we don't want to go there. You don't want to go there. Yeah. You cannot put somebody. Yeah. Real good stories make you think. Yeah. All right. Make you think in a way, make you feel in a way, make you look at things in a way that. Make you mad. It can make you mad. Because it. And that's okay. It your brain. All right. They can make you sad. Yeah. All right. They, there's things it's that stories used to do that we don't do. Any. We cannot go a certain. Lo- we can only go so far. Mostly. Mostly. Mainstream was. Yeah. Um. But if you think about all the iconic stuff, it really, it broke boundaries. It went deep into some kind of, yeah. you know, whether it's... Because it hit everybody. Like, there's not a single person that could watch that old stuff and go, I can't relate. So when I say that it's stories are traditionally can. told to speak to a universal truth about humanity, yep. every human carries... That's my point. Some universal, con- you know, right, feelings right, right, right. and concepts. Yeah. But we're not talking about that today because it could hurt somebody's feelings. You don't want to hurt this yeah, person's feelings, so let's don't let's let's be careful about what we say here, yeah. or let's let's show this in a way so we can you know let's make sure these people feel better feel better about it, or let's do this so that you know it gets on someone's radar here and we get some press about it. The other thing, also, I, I think the know. internet ruined a lot of stuff in well, the sense yeah. of yeah. Um, you got too many people with too much time going, <laughs> too many trolls out there going, well, this isn't historically accurate. Who gives a crap? It's a yeah. good story, you know. Yeah, you missed the point. If you're like thinking. Braveheart, and they go, well, this isn't exactly what William Wallace no, there was. Did. A car he was a, in the William background. Wallace was a terrorist. Uh, <laughs> it's like it depends on which side of the shield uh, you're on. Of course it is, but it's like my yeah. point is, it's a good story. Why an Academy Award? All right. Yeah. Uh, I just, I don't know. There is occasionally times when I'll go, man, this is really good. This is a good show. I'm really excited about watching yeah. it, but. Uh, a lot of shows that I actually do get into are based on books that some 
somebody that actually is classically trained and yeah you know writing and storytelling actually knows what they're talking about i wonder if they try to mask it today with like inner monologue because if you read i'm, I'm not I'm not one to completely pick on Tom King, but like I knew where you were going. But, where but, but there are that's page. overused right now. That's an overused monic technique. So inner thoughts explained at nauseum, very verbose kinds of thing, right? You have mm -hmm. pages and pages of inner monologue talk about how depressed and how mad and how conflicted you are. Is that a replacement for just like true um, human experiences that we might have? Experienced? I don't know. If you look at comic books, though, way. if you look at comic books, though, like even in the '90s, you know, they were like. I remember like reading one of these Batman books and Tim Drake was jumping off a car and like the car blew up and he was like, oh man, thank God I've got my Nomex suit on. Like he had to explain it to the audience because the audience would never know he had a Nomex fireproof. That's not, well, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about pages of like, hold on, woe is me. I'm depressed about stuff because my life sucks, but I'm Batman. Yeah. Dude, that's terrible right now. Yeah. Well, that's my point. I'm saying like there was other ways of relaying that human emotion and that experience that we just don't do anymore because we rely on this depressed thought process instead that we're just putting it on the page. Maybe that's just a cheap it's way of honestly. I think to... these writers today think they're they're more creative than they really are. Right. Yeah. yeah. Especially like people like Tom Taylor. Yeah. Like look look how much I'm putting on the page. Just, I'm so deep. I'm look so how, whatever. It's like no, you're not. You're no, just you're, you're, you're just superficial. Right. Right. Because there's you're no not, substance to what you're talking about. There's no arc in your character. There's no lessons learned. There's no humanity in your character right now. There's not. There's nothing you're pulling from. There's no universal human experience that you're pulling from. Well, or there's a lesson. Think about at this. The end. Like Nightwing, and I stopped reading Nightwing a long time ago. Yeah, I he think takes I Nightwing, who's a, a beloved, uh, yeah, something like a beloved character like Nightwing, and they're like, "Oh, I've all of a sudden got most of the fortune that Alfred Alfred had, and Spoiler. now I'm going to take it and uh, save the environment." And it's like it's back to the Lego conversation. That's not really what Nightwing is about, you know. He's yeah. a crime fighter. He fights crime. Dude beats up bad guys for a living. That's what he does. He gets, he's not out there trying to save the environment. And the occasional Batman. Yeah. Spoiler. Well. Spoiler. Um. And now you've got this whole conversation with the Bat family where, like, they all hate Batman. It's like... I don't believe that whole arc, by the way. <laughs> believe it or not. Honestly, I think it's going to wake up. It's going to be some kind of alternate dimension dream or something. Like, it's so... Um, all this just is... Like, Chip Zdarsky came out you, strong. You're, you're not on board with the Barbara convinces Bruce to give away all his money because being a rich guy is bad. God. Uh... He didn't. She didn't do that, right? Yeah, she did. I thought he was still suffering from like Joker War at the end of poverty the, at the end of the last um, Batgirl run. That's what she did. Wait, well, Bruce the, or Dick? You talking Bruce, about Dick or Bruce? Bruce. He's been broke since Joker War. Yeah, he's been broke. He got, he lost his money. Yeah, and he's been broke before. We've done that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Joker, one of those Catwoman uh, tricked Batman and Joker, and he lost all his money. Joker. I haven't read Detective Comics. I've got a stack this deep of Ron V comics. I need to catch up on. <laughs> But that's an interesting run right now. It's Ron V, so I love it. But is it actually detective stories? Um, it's more about a long, like a legacy. Like we owned Arkham before Arkham did, and Gotham. We owned all that. Like the Court of Owls. No, this is like, this is like way before Court of Owls kinds of stuff. This is uh -huh. like Ra's al Ghul legacy overseas. Um, families, very powerful mystical families that, that had ownership, and they're coming back to claim. It's not an original story. They're coming back to claim Gotham, right? And they're using mystical energies and things like that to do so. And they're destroying everything and trying to like systematically destroy the whole Bat family at the same time. And they're relying on ancient magic and things like that to do so. So I think that's another thing too, is like this whole mentality of like putting the villains in the hero, in the protagonist hero category, villainize, all right, victimize them or whatever, put the good guys in you in a situation like Bruce Wayne right now is like everybody hates him. Nobody yeah. wants to be around him. Except yeah. except Damien. <laughs> you know. And they've been estranged from day one. But um And they're writing him like that across all the books. A hundred percent. And it's just like even in Teen Titans there. Because nobody can write a Batman. detective story where a guy dressed up like a bat is actually out there trying to solve crimes. Yeah. You know what I, I mean? I don't know if that would sell, though, honestly. Like, who wants, I don't know. You don't think detective stories sell? You know what the longest running know. show on primetime television is? What? Law and Order SV, Law and Order, man. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, I get it. 
But like, do we want to see Batman scrubbing for prints and stuff like that? Like, I don't know. No, it's not so much that he's scrubbing for prints. It's like there's got to be like a mystery to well, solve. Well, it wasn't obvious. That, but Humans yeah, yeah, want yeah. a mystery to solve. Sure, that's, sure. That, that is a universal human truth. The, you know, Gargoyle of Gotham was good, and that was more was it? mystery. I yeah, again, you could do a, like nice four issue runs with with mysteries. Yeah, 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 and sell some books. But him yeah. gathering gathering clues and trying to figure so out like a riddle or the something. The very like that, first like, work? I don't know. Batman story arc that I comic book I ever bought or got because yeah. I got it. I actually got it from my uncle because I was I just had knee surgery. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he sent me a um, Blind Justice. Remember Blind Justice? Um, it was a Detective Comics actually. Hmm. Um, Probably if I saw it. Detective Comics 598. It was a three-part story. All right. Yeah. Sam Hamm wrote it. Um, okay. Yeah. I know that one. Yeah, he or was writing a lot of them back then. Yeah. But it was, um, you don't know it because it's not like a gigantic story. But it was a it was a literal detective story. You know, where Bruce Wayne and Commissioner Gordon, after they were yeah. trying to solve yeah. who this guy was that was like sure. controlling people's minds and stuff like that. And they had to figure out how to stop it. And that was the story. Yeah. And that's the story like most of those things are until they really kind of just, I don't know how to write this anymore. Or they got bored with it. Yeah. Well, uh, well it takes a lot of effort to, mm. to, to craft that kind of a story, I would imagine. I, or you can have Batman fall from the moon and make it really cool. I, I think, you know. The, like Chip did. I think, you know, to kind of round out this podcast, and I don't know what you're pulling up there, Matt. Um, oh, was that the one where she tells him to sell it, give away all his stuff? What does that say? Are you fact checking my my Joker war? Okay. What does that Batgirl, say? Yeah, I can't read that. I can't either. It's too far away, Matt. Batgirl just called Batman on his biggest flaw. What does it say here? All right, it says, at, as the current run of Batgirl comes to its conclusion with an oversized issue number 50, Barbara Gordon finally calls out Batman on his biggest flaw and asks him, asks why he doesn't donate his money to fight crime. What's she talking about, bro? Yeah, she, this, I mean, half of... Everything he Gotham City Police is corrupt, and he, they, he, yeah. What are you going to donate the money to? Yeah, exactly. What are you going to give your? You're going to put more Leslie Tompkins free hospitals out there. I mean, every gadget he has, he puts into fighting crime with his money. Yeah, and he's yeah, broke. He doesn't he's take broke. vacations. He doesn't take vacations. That's so an old. That's and he's a, broke. Anyways, Batman right now. background number fifty, but that's what that's what three years ago. Oh, yeah, it was three years ago. It's been a hot minute. It's during COVID. Oh, yeah, so he probably still had his money. That was probably prior to Catwoman <laughs> stealing all of it and giving it to Joker. <laughs> Catwoman's kind of ruined everything. <laughs> she didn't hey, show up for the wedding. She stole all his money. I ain't saying she's a gold digger, but... Well, <laughs> she's she's decreased I mean, Gotham's... She's a cat uh, burglar. She's a cat burglar. She's decreased Gotham's... She's played the long game here. ...crime by, like, 75%. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. Yeah. There's a little other sub story going on in there. I know. I'm not reading all the tie ins. I can't do there's it. There's no, I mean, it's that's main story stuff. Uh, well, no, there's Batman, then there's Gotham City War, and then there's I'm Red just saying Hood, that what and I'm then there's Catwoman, about, and then there's. I haven't read the Red Hood stuff. Yeah, there's like at least four. They haven't all come in there. I'm just saying, yeah. what I'm talking about is main story arc. Gotcha. So, okay. Um, no, I mean, I want to run this out. And, I mean, I'm. There's. You know, the, a lot of this conversation came from like what's what's actually selling today, what's what's working, what's um you know, why are we running this, you know, whole endeavor? <laughs> you know. Well um you know, people still come in here and they're like, Oh, well, let me get this figure. Or, I mean, I sold like a lot of anime figures over the weekend, but Well, it used to be the books would drive the movies and the but you know now the movies drive the books, and the movies and, and the TV shows have always driven the the action figure no, the market. Licensing drives everything, bro. Well, but what I'm saying is just that the, there has to be content out there to sell the toys, and it has to be good content to sell the toys, and it has to be you know good stories. Like we we have talked about story and how things suck now, like in so many of these episodes. But like you look at like the statistics, like I don't know what else we can say on on the topic, but like. My, like superheroes take up about 16 percent of market share for comic and graphic novels so yeah um that's not where people are going to to, to find their stories manga is like right at 50 and then like kids books make up the rest of that i so. don't think 
comic book superheroes have really ever dominated the market, though. Well, maybe, maybe, that's what maybe they, that's all there was. Maybe at the end of the two thousands, like or two th- early two thousands, when MCU was kind of at its heights, but. Yeah, but was manga always that much of the market share though? Yeah, heck There's no. no. I mean, what was what was the manga pie uh, section in like the 90s? Uh, I don't know. In 1993, how much manga was being sold? <laughs> you know, compared to Image Comics. <laughs> Or, well, yeah. Image Comics was brand new. In I know. What, what I'm saying is, <laughs> yeah, like, there's obviously a shift in something. Yeah, but even back then, my point is, even back then, like, as far as, I mean, comic books were pretty secular. You yeah. know? Yeah. I mean, it wasn't like. I mean, every once in a while you get a movie out like Blade or. It's you know, so good. Yeah. But, yeah. But that's a big, big number, man. That's a huge yeah. market share. Yeah. And, and there's not broad audiences anymore. Everything is so niche, you know, among, among everything. Like even within uh, just that big manga number, there's tiny, you know, little niche. Uh, subsections. Pocket, yeah, stuff. subsections yeah. of that. Listen, that's, you got to, this stuff is circular. circular. I mean, it like. You probably could ask teenagers today what they think about Harry Potter, and they're going to go, what? I mean, if you think about it, Harry Potter's 25 years old. Yeah. <laughs> the yeah. books are older, like almost 30. You know, it's like nobody, they don't like, I don't want, I don't care about Harry Potter. Yeah, yeah. Try talking Lord of the Rings to somebody, <laughs> you know? There are very few of us the Lord best, of the Rings nerds the out there. The best Christmas movies? Yeah. Or yeah. Star Trek. Yeah. Of all the people in the shop that like Star Trek, I only know of me and Matt. There's a few other yeah. people, but like really kind of get into it. Not many. No. But, you know, I think the MCU, and I remember this when I, we were doing, I was pretty hot. and I mean, I was pretty active going to Dragon Con, mm-hmm. and, you know. Um, and I would say between 2009, 2019, you know, I went every year, maybe missed one. But like I, I remember seeing an active change in the attendees. And like there were actually conversations. They used to have like these Dragon Con TV and all the hotel rooms. Mm. And there were active conversations about everybody's a fan and start to play nice because cause there were a lot of these, I guess they were calling them fake fans. They were just, they liked the Marvel movies, but they weren't really fans yeah. traditionally. Mm-hmm. So there was a lot of animosity about like old school. This and they were new fans. New I fans. Bet. Yeah, yeah. And then, so yeah. the it really transitioned into like a, you know, seeing these mainstream superheroes like. Deadpool and Harley Quinn and yeah um, but people were it was like all right now people are getting excited about this nerd conversation that's been going on forever right um, and I think a lot of that hype is gone you know I think like you said generations turn people are yeah. looking at you know social media and YouTube's content for um, whatever but, and I think this stuff is going to Start to take a back seat, and I think Disney say people like Disney because this is where it all kind of started for me. Was like, what's Disney doing? But Disney's probably taking a hard look at like, well, and I and I, I don't love Disney for what they're doing. I mean, yeah. they literally destroyed two things that I really, really, really enjoyed, and really milked it to into oblivion, right? You know, and and it's not just Disney. I mean, Warner Brothers has done a lot of that. I mean, there are a lot of crappy Batman stories out there. Um, they. I didn't like any of the Superman stuff they put out. I didn't like Suicide Squads. I didn't like Peacemaker, but that just wasn't me. A lot of yeah. people are like, ooh, no, no, I'm just talking about young people, but yeah. the, you didn't like Peacemaker? Nah, I couldn't get into it. <laughs> John Cena, man. <laughs> I just wasn't into well, it. Well, again, a star, a star that was raised, or that you weren't raised with. So, I mean, like, I bet a lot of younger people loved Peacemaker because they grew up with John Cena and they liked that. I mean, I grew up. I mean, I remember John Cena when he was a wrestler. But like, I know, but I'm saying like that. I was might the be. Rock was a little before John yeah. Cena when he went out there and tried to be an actor. <laughs> it wasn't really resonating either. Now you watch your mouth. Jungle Book was amazing. Mm-hmm. Jungle Book wasn't good. Was it Jungle Book? Jungle Cruise. Yeah. Jungle, Jungle Cruise. Cruise yeah. <laughs> uh, I did like Jungle Cruise. And Jumanji. What's my favorite? He was good in Jumanji. He was good. Have you seen the Scorpion King though? Uh, yeah. <laughs> They're not all winners. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what his best movie was. Walking Tall. Mm, he was really young then, but like he, his acting Was his chops. name Buford Pusser in that movie? That's a remake, by the way. Oh, well, I, know I think that. it's a that's remake of asking. a remake. That's why I'm it's asking. A, I don't remember what his name was. Because I'm not believing The Rock as a, a Buford Pusser. What was The Rock's best film? 
Matt, what's his best film? I don't know what he's bringing up over. I can't tell he's moving too fast. What a transition. Right. Great to The Rock. Well, you started with John Cena. I did. My fault. You know, but people thought Michael Keaton was going to be a terrible Batman. Us included. We were like, what? Well, he was Mr. Mom, man. It well, it was took like, 30 years to prove that wrong. But, yeah. We needed other examples of how bad it could get. Well, no, immediately <laughs> we were like, this dude's awesome. That's how I felt about it. Was that the culture in 89? Like, just after that movie came out, everyone was like an instant star? I think everybody was like, oh, my God, he's I can't believe that. But, I mean, he's such a good actor. And were they in love with uh, Tim Burton or were they in love with him as an actor? Though? If you go back and watch I Tim Burton, anybody I talked to was like, Michael Keaton's going to be Batman. That doesn't make any sense. I can't even imagine. Well, he's like that. this little he was, comedian. He was, he was funny. Yeah, he was in, in right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that. It's it's a whole different role for him. Yeah, but then he killed it. So yeah. yeah. Um, it's just, it's what good actors do. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, well, you but said Tim it, Burton also put a pretty good spin on it. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. it was. I mean, you got to think before that it was like '66 Batman. There was no Batman before that. Superman was the Superman was the guy. Yeah, it wasn't until '89 until Batman took over DC. Yeah, and uh, it was uh, he uh, and the whole anti-hero thing started to, big time. Yeah. Well, we had, we had a conversation one time. It was what was the biggest inf- what was the biggest change in Batman's um, perception? Was it Dark Knight, uh, Frank Miller? Was it '89 Batman, or was it the Batman animated series? Like, what what of those three had the biggest? Um, longest lasting impact on Batman in general because like you said coming out of what we knew like Adam West Batman kind of stuff we got into this weird area where like everything got real dark and gritty really quick with all three of those projects and so like which one of those was the catalyst for that big change Uh, uh, yeah I think did Frank Miller influence 89 I I don't remember the order of operations here well Batman was so much older that was what was different about that. But it was a vibe. It was a feel. It was a dark story. Yeah. yeah. It was the first real dark Batman story. Prob that. I'm trying to think of like mainstream Batman comics at the time were like, like he was complete. He was still old chum, you know. Before. Uh, well, up until Jason died. Yeah. Well, even right before Jason died, it was, stories were getting a little more mature. And when was that? Probably post crisis. Was like, that the? I would say post crisis. Eighty six, eighty seven. Eighty seven. I think they were like post infinite crisis. Crisis on Infinite yeah. Earths, um, yeah. the first crisis, um, when they really got rid of the Earth Two Batman, like I think that was the corny Batman, mm-hmm. you know, the Golden Age Batman. I I think when they got rid of him and the Robin and just sort of mainstreamed everything, I think they rebooted Jason at yeah. that point. You know, things got a little started turning in that direction. Yeah. And I think Frank Miller <clears throat> can be argued that yeah, he he's always seems to be like the popular he changed everything and then <laughs> seriously matt that's that's his best work voyager star trek <laughs> voyager as the rock no as the uh that was his uh, he was billed as the rock champion okay that's fine um anyway um uh, yeah just curious to see no I, I honestly the batman animated series was was greatly influenced by the movie had yeah, the music yeah. uh yeah oh yeah for sure the <laughs> but honestly, and I, would, stuff. I would argue tim burton did a lot of that because he made that whole sets mm-hmm. all those sets real dark real kind of gloomy looking yeah but if you watch that man it's a little corny of course it still has a lot of camp in it a lot, yes. a lot more than you would think and then i think it's a perfect marriage of that like the comic but the animated know? for me yeah. batman the animated series is probably the best depictions of batman that and maybe the mm-hmm. Arkham games. Because it was detective. Yep. And it was action. And it had a little grit. And it, had, it knew how to end one episode. And Batman had Alfred. He had a Batcave and a Bat- Wayne Manor. And then, like. The villains were good. Villains were good. Everyone was villains in the were right the villains. Place. Everybody was where they're supposed to be. Yeah. There was good. There was evil. Yeah, for sure. Except for Clayface. He was always like, I'm a victim kind of thing. Clayface but, was a victim. I He's know. a victim of the mob. But he, he was a, him up. but he was a. Yeah. And that's but, another but thing, too. Was like the there was a lot of. Character. That's another thing, too, I think is missing from today's comics we gotta wrap this up you know, we've been talking forever um there were a lot of stories that didn't involve a major villain like it was just you know some mobster or some dude trying to get ahead or some chick trying to pull one over on somebody it was like yeah 
because you don't need a major you don't villain every time it can so be that have level, a good story it could be that street level thug well sometimes it, it was just you know maybe and then you could be someone being misunderstood or trying to save his family and doing something for that yeah i mean mr freeze's whole stick is that he's, he wants to save his wife you know yeah but he did look crazy <laughs> <laughs> inhaled too much freon yeah yeah uh well i think just back then too like um the shows had that were on tv 27 or 30 episodes every single season so it made you kind of bring other people into it uh other yeah. villains and other other things can't yeah because you can't keep running the the the, the same seven or eight uh, well and i'll say this through. too and you know it's like but they had staff writers that worked on these things like yeah and it's like it's like today in the music business all these artists that are out there want to write their own stuff because then they can have access to the money themselves they don't have to pay it out to somebody yeah but older songs were written by other people and performed by an artist so there was there was a it was people working together that made good art that made good right. stories right now everybody thinks that they're the best and the access to presenting <laughs> yeah. what they think is the best has never been easier yeah so yeah i think i mean and I'm, I'm sure places like dc if you're on the business side of that you're like man all we got is tom taylor over here i mean nobody else wants to write this crap you know <laughs> or they're all jumped to image for their exclusives and stuff they got they had two they make more masks. money because yeah. it's all about i can make more yeah. money if i do this myself well and who the hell wants to write a batman story when he's been written for so many decades when you can when you have all these other creative ideas inside of you that you need to get out you want to get cadets, out man yeah, right. It's like so if I if you're a major writer and you could make more money, yeah, you can be on Batman or you can possibly knock out these other three issues of whatever that you have in your mind. You're going to go over there and take care of that cuz you creatively need to do oh, that. That's what's up with Tiny and man. Like it's why his Batman run was suck. It was just a feather in his cap. That's all Chip sure. is, is a feather in his cap. Yeah. But do you uh, is there a lot of editorial like oversight with those with these writers when they're on these um uh, like because i don't these, think it's like it used to be a lot of these good writers it seems like when they go to to these big titles then they it's not very good and you seem like you're always let down and just wondered if are they just too you know there's too much oversight there where they can't really write the way they want to there's there's some and it takes in it takes them out of um being yeah. able to like Tinian, you know he could have if he could have really written batman the way he wanted to then it would have been good yeah but he wanted three, to write for three issues he wanted to write suck up something's that. killed in the children batman you know <laughs> fine i mean if it's good it's good yeah man. there's crazy there's crazy editorial insight i mean you don't get hickman's x-men run where he just completely shits the bed easy I, well no no, <laughs> no. Like it, yeah. powers you know powers and 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 house of are good uh -huh. and then after that yeah it gets bad it goes bad well he stopped writing him well no he still he was on what he was on uncanny for a while after that he was on uncanny for like 21 issues yeah that's a lot of issues it is it's almost two years and it was all garbage it's terrible and that's because of editorial insight yeah, that's because like of it. editorial deciding where yeah. it needs to go yeah, it was no house and powers correct sure. This ADD yeah. moment is brought to you by Adderall. <laughs> Question: I bought actually I bought a or we bought a bunch of um, X Men this week, like tons of it. Have you gone through the? Boxes Are you asking me that I need them? to go buy have some you, more comics? Have you have you looked through them? It's in that box over here, all over in the case. Yeah. Oh, it's lots. I, and lots. I noticed in the case you got a ton yeah. of on candy on there. Got a yeah, lot, good man. For you guys. Got you got a, you got a rogue joins X Men on there. Mm -hmm, you got you mm -hmm. got some other stuff. Yeah, got some minor keys. Yeah, yeah. I have to. I have a lot of uncanny x-men but all my whole collection starts at like 120. yeah oh, we got a little we got we got some right we got you, you got man. some we got, you got some up there. i want like claremont on we got, got claremont yeah. we got claremont yeah I mean, okay back to the regular anyway, schedule anyway. program AD moment. well yeah you said everything is circular i i think obviously we saw some headlines that are saying that right we were in this phase where we had all these different creators trying to put out whatever kind of crap they wanted to put out this time using legacy characters and legacy ip to do so and the reception wasn't great and we just saw a headline that a lot of that stuff is crashing and burning so are we going around the bend right now maybe that 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 the first sign is stopping it'll get projects worse from happening. before it gets better and i've said or this or did we already get worse and we're I'd, getting better i don't know some dc books are better i like green arrow yeah. i like green lantern um and those are major characters, and they haven't had their day in a long time. And I've yeah. enjoyed those. I don't know that mainstream Superman's fantastic because I think they've got too many characters they're trying to talk about. 
Yeah, I like Superman Lost. I don't know if you'd like it though. Um, Joey says yeah. it's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I haven't read it though, but yeah. um, I don't like Brave and the Bold. Christopher Priest is on Lost, I believe. Mm. Um, yeah, Brave and the Bold's been a disappointment. I do think DC yeah, is starting to that one. come around. Yeah, a little bit. I yeah. don't know if Warner Brothers and their movie content is any good, but or TV shows, but they don't seem to be yeah. turning out crap like Disney is in droves. Yeah, but two years ago, all those shows that Disney just canceled, or you know, those Marvel shows and everything, those probably would have made it. Two years ago? Three years ago. Mm-hmm. Whatever. What are you talking about? COVID? Yeah, we, no. Not, not, not gonna, <laughs> because everybody was at they home? They physically couldn't do it. What I'm oh. saying is they canceled, they, they scrapped Daredevil because the quality was just not there. They got, and so it's like, okay, there are there are moves in play right now that would suggest that they're paying more attention to the quality of their products. So and maybe that's the first step in a, in that circular direction that you're talking about. We went too far one way. <laughs> now we're correcting. Uh, yes, that's probably what's going on. And, and but you the first step is stopping. This things. goes back again to like, when you're behind the curtain and you see how a production is put together and it's, yeah. it's production put together by people. And all those people have all these different beliefs and philosophies that they want to impress in whatever job they have to make this production work. Yeah. And, whether they can agree on it or not is they don't that's that's that rarely happens you know yeah you get a director that wants to go this way and the actors think you should do it like this and the writer is like i give up and whatever so it could be a fluke that things are being canceled right now and no, not a shift in the I think culture it's like and the team products sports. that come out of it i think it's like i think it's like team sports too it's like when you get that dream team you know it's rare you know yeah i think that like, it's like I think the reason the Lord of the Rings trilogy was so good and popular at the time was because the people that put that thing together put a lot of love into it. Oh yeah, worked really well together. The writers, the director, Peter Jackson, his camp, everybody down to the armorers that put the chain mail together. And what about truthfulness to the source material? I'd never read Lord of the Rings. It's, unfortunately, it's, I don't know if any. It's as close as this is something Matt and I talk about with Wheel of Time. I think it's as close as they could get it. And keep it moving for of the type of medium it was in. Well, yeah, there are characters can't, can't and scenarios so that happen in right. the books that it just wouldn't make sense, and right, people would right, get right, lost. Right, 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 right. So if you're trying to keep it into the movie, see that. And again, the Peter pacing, Jackson yeah. and his writers, they looked at that and said, "Okay, Tom Bombadil is a great character in Lord of the Rings, but he doesn't do anything. You know, he doesn't motivate the story forward." Yeah, yeah. All right, and He's maybe a fan favorite with the literature readers of the, you with know, Stephen Colbert, but like nobody else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and there are other characters. There's elves in there and, uh, there's actually another, there's a fifth Hobbit that doesn't make it into the movies. <laughs> right, you blowing my mind now. Now I got to read the <laughs> freaking Hobbit. I'm working on it, Matt. Um, <laughs> there's too many long names I can't pronounce. I'm done with it. Of what? Lord of the Rings? Yeah. My point is, is like, I think that people put love into stuff like that. And I just, Today, there's so many egos that drive this yeah. this industry that it's just we're lucky if something comes together and we all yeah. we all love it, you know. Yeah. Unless I, I don't know what's making like world's finest thing. Is it just Mark Wade's, you know, writing direction and he's just sort of tricking everybody because he's been doing it so long? Maybe. Uh, or it's just he's just really good at his craft, you know. But yeah. Um. I don't know, man. I, I just think there's a lot of people out there that just got into this business really easily you know and it's just not as good as it could be yeah well um again my point it could be we may be bottom out we may be yeah. starting to hit that rise well, well my point is in order, time will tell in order to swing back around in order to for things to change you need to react to the to the uh, to the results of what you've done and it sounds like they, they're not happy with it so they got to make some changes so i think it I sounds think, like things might i think this is the right them. move on disney my biggest like fear is like what, what's going to be next is it going to be better is it going to be worse i don't know i don't know i don't know well, gotta hit the reset button before you know yeah. yeah so here we go um well nick thanks for coming to hanging with us tonight absolutely it's been a long conversation we have really kind of beat this thing to death i know we're all tired you've had a long week i've yeah. had a long weekend joey's had a long weekend which is like um but it's good to get back into the shop and have the conversation on the podcast for sure um just so we can I mean, we have these conversations all day anyway when we're in here because that's really all it is, is nerd conversations. Yeah. How many times do we say, man, we should have recorded that? Uh, <laughs> no, man, um, Matt true. and I's phone conversation, we should have put that on record. That was pretty good yeah, the other day. Yeah. But 
then we get in here tonight and it's like man we're tired let's go home um <laughs> but anyway man thanks for coming out um, no, no problem thanks for having and uh once you real quick to you know make sure everybody knows your your handles and yeah. like uh, your shows we'll put those yeah, links in the yeah. description uh youtube and instagram comic culture you can find me on there and uh i do like we said before do release videos we do foc videos i shoot them right here at the shop put them out on Wednesday afternoons and then we do haul videos as well and then on Saturday we do Nick at Night so I talk about all the books that I got this past week give you my thoughts about them and if you like that kind of talking head thing you can check me out there and then of course we're on I'm part of a little network called the Peace Peace Army Bad Batch led by pop culture philosophers and um, yeah we do all kinds of collaborations we do movie reviews and we do other kinds of shows mm-hmm. going over news and things like that so all right. you can catch me lots on all of kinds good of times there he is. you Nick can catch comment. me on all kinds of stuff. And if you're new to comics too, I have a whole thing on uh, how to get into comic books today, how to how to buy, how to sell, how to price, how to uh, find things you like. You Key know. comic book walkthroughs. Key comic book walkthroughs. Um, yeah, these Good pretty stuff. covers actually have stories behind them, believe it or not. And so I take them out, we walk through it. So you get to be educated at the same time. Yeah, it's really good because so. Nick can be a guide on, you know, maybe what to pick up yeah, when you come absolutely. to the shop. Joey, what, what's our handles? Our handles are at cadets toys on instagram and cadets toys and comics on facebook and right here on youtube cadets toys and comics yeah, and yeah, yeah. check show. out our website at cadets toys.com and if again if you're in the spring hill area or the greater nashville area be sure to swing by and say yes that's it Get to see a famous person like nick um getting youtube there. famous get, getting there <laughs> do you ever think you'd be like i'm on a youtube show uh yeah i never would have thought about that i don't know it's Just, it's whatever all the cool kids are doing well, not. you're definitely one of the cool kids. So. Trying to be. And, uh, you know, big shout out to our team back there on the tens and the twos. Yep, yep. And uh, look, guys, I guess we'll come together next week, see what's in the shop. Um, and, again, hit that like, subscribe button. And Joey? that bell notification. Yes, ding. Ding, ding. Ding, ding. Ding. <laughs> All right, yeah. I think I'm going to cut it loose tonight. All right. Peace out. Bye, son. Bye, son. Bye, son.